Good morning, everybody. It's the day after Christmas. I'm out in the shop fiddling around. Nothing I got for Christmas, but I was just uh, going to show you one of my setups. <laughs> it's a, actually a tool I made uh, for doing shafts, and this is quick and easy. Um, this is just a, a little uh, piece that goes on my, my tool post, and I, and I bent these yokes um, actually on the slip roller. And I give them a series of holes so it'll clamp different shafts. And there's a V-block uh, cut out into there so it'll index the shaft. And you just clamp down on the shaft with uh, these two Allen bolts. And if you're worried about marring up the shaft, um, this is just a test piece to show you, kind of show you the setup. But uh, if you don't want to uh, booger up your shaft, uh, I just take a copper penny and stick in a vise and kind of kink it, put a little bend in it and then drop it over the shaft and then tighten down on a copper penny even though pennies aren't made out of copper anymore but uh, um, yeah that, that shows you my setup I put an end mill in the lathe and then I use a long uh, travel dial indicator so I know how far I'm going in uh, and the, the beauty of this is it doesn't matter which way you stick this shaft in how deep you put it in if you're doing multiple shafts you just stick them in there uh, where they gonna work and then crank it in until your dial reads whatever you want your dial to read and that way you know all your uh, all your slots are the same depth or length should I say um, but it's pretty easy just uh, you know lock your carriage and uh, you can change the parts uh, um, just with these or if you're uh, if you want to measure it you just uh, you know pop it out of the tool post with the shaft still in it and you can take it over on the bench and run a file on it and clean it up and uh, you know measure it did I get the right depth check it on a shaft whatever and, and just leave it in this little fixture and you can always uh, just pop it back on and uh, the way I made this um, I was doing a, a run of some actually very short shafts um, at the time let me back the carriage up real quick and I'll show you what what else I built into it um, I also made it so that uh, this and the V-block are exactly the same top and bottom. You know, there's no adjusting nut on here to raise or lower it. I don't need to. This this block actually just uh, bumps down right on top of the compound. So the di that distance is equal both ways. And what I can do with this is I take it and I can actually just flip it and uh, lock it. And I'm still on center. So I had a short run, probably 75 pieces of some shafts. And uh, I, the way I did it is I, you know, milled one side. And I just took the whole fixture, flipped it over, and milled the opposite side. That way my slots were parallel with each other, or they were clocked correctly. Uh, I had my long travel indicator. They were all identical on the depth of cut and the length of cut. And uh, it was fast and easy. And that's what I made this little tool for. Um, and I've used it several times. And you're saying, wow, gee, that's kind of a one-trick pony. But uh, I'm going to uh, show you what else it does here in a little while. And it was kind of an afterthought, and it's maybe silly, but uh, I'm going to show you what else I do with it for making uh, uh, tie rods, uh, very small tie rods, and threading small tie rods for uh, air cylinders. But uh, I'm going to demonstrate that here in uh real quick but that's the setup for doing uh, uh, small production runs of shafting and being able to index your your uh, your shaft repeatedly and pull it out test fit put it back in check it do whatever you need to do alrighty um, I'll be right back okay I thought I'd show you this uh, working uh, we're gonna turn on here that's yeah, a pretty small end mill, so I'm pushing it up pretty high. And uh, we're just going to engage our keys down here for the cross line. And there it goes. And our indicator is running. That's a nice long, uh, I believe that's a, yeah, that's a two inch indicator. So you can see it's uh, on its way. I'm just going a little deeper into an existing slot right now so you can see what's uh, going on there. 
and I typically drip a little coolant right on the tool, but I'm uh, leaving that off of there so we don't sling coolant all over the camera and you guys can get a better view. And we're coming up on our total cut. And stop. And I'm two thousandths over my last cut, but I'm, I'm good with that. And now we'll just back it straight out. And uh, put off the machine and you can flip the part and do the other end or uh, take that out and use it somewhere or whatever but it uh, it easily comes out while it's still in the fixture and here's the next little segment um, again with our our uh, yoke little tool holder uh, I'm only using one of the yokes and that's a impact socket and we're down on center again it's uh, we can't help but be on center that's the way the tools designed so the center of that impact is center of the spindle and uh, well, that's, yeah, that's kind of silly but we're gonna take uh, just a uh, cad plated rod and uh, just throw in a call it wherever you want doesn't really matter uh, lock that down. Then what are we gonna stick in? Why you got a socket in there? That's stupid. We're gonna take a hex die, and you're gonna make sure. Only thing you gotta make sure of is put the uh, the lead inside facing the uh, put the lead inside facing the uh, the rod. Pretty simple. Okay. So we're, and we're gonna run at low speed. And now I got my rod spinning. And I got my gearbox set for uh, 20 right now. That's a 28 thread, so I'm going to go over here. Let's see, I'm on 28B. Okay, so we're good. So my, uh, I got the clutch in neutral, so our, our thread is going to run in at uh, 28 threads per uh, per inch. We're going to give it a little dab of oil there. A little in on the die there and run it up to there and now I'm just going to engage my half nut and let her rip gosh that's a lot easier than single point thread and especially these stupid small things now I'm just going to disengage the half nut and all that's going to do is pull out that uh, hex nut Gee whiz, look at that. Again, fast and easy. And here we are just backing it out. And I'm just advancing the carriage by hand just to give it some slack behind the uh, behind the die. And there you have it. And I make tie rods for air cylinders like that. I've uh, never tried anything bigger than a quarter inch. You know, you get up in the bigger sizes, you're probably better off just single point threading it. But little tiny stuff like a number 10 or a number 8 rod, little tiny stuff, I'm not going to single point thread that. I'm going to throw a die on there and blaze through it like this. Okay, here's a rod we just made. I'm going to try to zoom in it on here on the paper so you can kind of see those threads. It's still kind of blurry. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty clean thread. And that puts your, your hand die sets to good use. And uh, for some of the small stuff, for the quarter inch or number 10 or whatever, you can just get plain rod and make your own, uh, make your own threaded studs. They're not high strength. They're definitely not you know, hardened or anything like that. But if you need a, a special stud of a crazy length or something, you can make your own. Uh, quickly and easily without having to do any single point threading. Alrighty, and I've seen guys that do tailstock adapters for dies with advancing setups and everything, and I, my way is just fast and easy.